Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming um, this evening to join us uh, in the meetup. So we have uh, Ganesh, our consultant, who will be walking us through what is Ansible Navigator as well as how we can do content signing uh, with the Ansible Navigator. All right. So I'll uh, hand over to you, Ganesh. Thanks, everybody. Um, hello, everyone. OK, so today we have um, some not new, actually. Uh, Kind of an uh, interesting topic about Ansible Navigator and also about the content signing, how to secure the Ansible content. And you have um, different places to store this content in Hub, GitHub, or somewhere. Okay, so we have a small agenda. So we will be discussing about the Ansible Navigator, the new tool, not new, very new, but then we can uh, use the Ansible. Navigator instead of Ansible Playbook, and what are the differences or what are the advantages? Then we will be talking about the CLI and DUI differences, and also we will learn how to use the execution environment with the Ansible Navigator. Then we will talk about the chain of custody using the digital signing, uh, which was introduced in 2.2 version of AAP. And also we will see how we can enable the content signing and secure your chain of uh, custody or secure your content collection. Of course, we will have a, a small demo and we will spend time on Q&A discussions with all. Okay, uh, my name is Kinish and I work with the Red Hat as consultant. I don't think I need to explain. Okay, first thing, Ansible Navigator. So what is Ansible Navigator? So this is the new CLI tool introduced in the Ansible Automation Platform 2 for running and developing your Ansible automation playbook content, also collection or all the automation content. Um, this one have a DUI and also the CLI. So the DUI is for like, a, you have a menu based uh, navigation where you can operate and manage your executions for the automation, like the playbooks, the doc and all. I will explain that in detail. So installation of the Navigator is very simple. You can install using the Python uh, pip package, or you can install from the Red Hat repository, but you need a subscription. Remember that. So it's, uh, you can see it's, it's coming from the Ansible Automation Platform 2.2 or 2.3 repository for uh, 8 or 9. Then uh, this is a very high level table. How you can replace your Ansible playbook or Ansible different star commands with the Ansible Navigator subcommands. So for example, I can explain here. So we have Ansible command for the ad hoc execution. So where you have an Ansible, then you run some commands uh, with the modules. On the other side, you can see Ansible Navigator, and you use the subcommand called Ansible execution, or exec, then hyphen hyphen, then whatever command you want to pass, like Ansible or stuff. Even these commands will work after that. Now for the playbook, you can use the Ansible Navigator uh, run subcommand. Then you can see all the doc, config, every Ansible hyphen star command or the utility, you have a equivalent or alternative commands in the Ansible Navigator as subcommands. Okay. Now, um, how to use this? So it's very simple. To execute a playbook, earlier we use, okay, Ansible playbook, then you pass the playbook then it will be executed, you know, the output, the, no long, the, the long one. If you are using the navigator, it's very simple, Ansible navigator, you run, you pass this run subcommand, then you put the playbook, then there is an option whether you want to show the output as the standard output, like the scrolling one, or like a DUI, where, where you can see the step-by-step -step task, the number of, uh, like number of uh, hosts and all. So this is a very simple one. So we have executed one simple add command here. Then we just try in command. It's the same Ansible add command, but actually it's running under the Ansible Navigator subcommand. So for the, if you want to check the version, you can see here, we are just checking the same Ansible add command. Then you can see actually it's where is running and all the details, what is the Python details, all the things. Same, same setup, nothing changed except the utility change. Now, 
this is a TUI dashboard, or you can call Ansible Navigator TUI mode, where you can see the menu based uh, navigation where you can see like where I want to display the collections or configuration or running images. This is the execution moment. We will talk about that later. Then some other information. So this is one of the models, a replay. Because Anthro playbook, once you execute it, like thousand lines of output, no option to, you can scroll, scroll back. But in Ansible Navigator, you can record it, the end output like the Ansible Tower or Ansible Automation Platform and replay it. And you can see what happened in the previous play. Okay. Now, uh, these are the images. So we have a common issue like the application. I developed the playbook. I executed it, everything working well. Now I put in the Ansible automation platform because this is running inside container. Something breaks because the dependency on your laptop is different on the container. Now, normally we have a question how we can test the same container setup. We can use the Ansible Navigator because Ansible Navigator can execute the playbook inside the same container you are running in the AAP. Okay. Um, if you check here, uh, Ansible Navigator will show actually it's a Podman images or Docker images, whatever your container run, run back. You can see it's um, it's showing the supported execution environment. One of the image is not execution environment because it's a builder. So if you have multiple one, you can see which one is ex actually the execution environment and the normal images. Okay. So this uh, option to see the collection. So again, you can see Ansible Galaxy, then collection list and all is a uh, very one you can see what are the collections in the local or inside the navigator so inside the execution environment now this is another useful feature earlier i mentioned a replay so remember to enable the replay we have to collect the ansible playbook artifacts so when it executed when you execute a playbook or some comments we have to enable the recording. So it's like a, it will store in a file, like artifacts file. So you can mention, okay, uh, where you want to keep it, where you want to uh, take the actual artifact somewhere in a location safely for your debugging purpose. Maybe you executed one, it was working, then later it's not working, then you can go back and check. No need to do the scrolling because scrolling, we have a limit on the pre session. Then uh, once you have the artifact stored, then you can use the so there is something type of uh, Ansible Navigator replay and uh, pass the artifacts details to Now, this is interestingly where we can pass most of the Ansible Navigator parameters in the CLI, like Ansible Navigator, you can pass the execution environment, you can pass the environment variable, you can pass many things, but when you actually do the development, it's not easy to pass everything in the CLI. It will be very lengthy. So you can utilize the Ansible Navigator configuration here, where you can see we configure the execution environment. We can also disable or enable it. So you don't need to modify everything. But if I would enable the false means, okay, I am not using the container image, just executing the Ansible Navigator using the local Ansible. Okay. If I enable this, it will be using the container image and everything will be executed inside the container image like your AAP. Now, similar to the ansible.cfg file, we have multiple locations where we can keep the Ansible Navigator YAML. It can be your home directory or environment variable or your project directory. So usually we recommend to keep in the project directory, whatever related to the project, because maybe for this playbook, you are automating like some Windows or Cisco stuff, then you will have some special execution environment, then you keep the details in, inside your current project directory. And the settings can be JSON or YAML format. Okay, so this is a um, sample. So let's say uh, you have to create the basic, you're starting with the settings or something you configured in the wrong way. So you can create a sample Ansible Navigator settings using this command. Then from there, you can create your own Ansible Navigator or YAML and fine tune it based on your requirement. Now, uh, we will 
try the Ansible Navigator first before we go to the current signing topic. So we have this. Okay. okay, so this is a sample. Okay, let me. Okay, so this is a sample Ansible Navigator YAML where you can see the editor. Even I can decide which editor I want to uh, use for the development. For example, if you are using the code server or the code VS Code, or if you are using some different, then you can mention, okay, I am using this editor. Then the console you can disable or enable. Then you have other options like the execution environment, where you can see I have used I'm using the EE supported rel eight container image. Okay, maybe you can put it somewhere here. Then um, I have some arguments like the pull arguments where I can put the TLS verify false because maybe you're using the self signed certificate. Then you have a policy like only pull the image if it's missing. Or if you want to pull every time, you can put like always same like AAP. Then you have some other options logging whether you want to enable the logging because it will keep the log information here. Also, you can say the artifacts. There are many other options. You can explore that in the Ansible Navigator uh, documentation website. Okay, the first thing. Let me. Okay, sorry. Okay. So the first thing actually we just want to see the details. So Ansible Navigator, if you just run Ansible Navigator, it will show the dashboard where you can see all the details. So right now, you know, we are using the execution environment. And if I want to see the collections, Actually, we are seeing the collection inside the container image. So I can confirm whether my required collection is already inside or not. If it's complaining, okay, this is missing, the module is missing like that. So I'm using the container now. So this is inside the container because I already put this inside my Ansible Navigator configuration. Use this container. So if I put enable false, I'll be using the local environment. Okay. Now, uh, the menu is very simple. Escape, it will go back. And if I want to see the current configurations, we have, we kept something. So we can see all the configurations inside the Ansible.cfc, all those details. Like the you can see the, for example, uh, the port value or all those details you can see here. But this is just config. If you want to change, you have to go back to the ansible.cfc and change it. Okay. So you can verify whatever the configurations. It was not easy with the earlier Ansible playbook or Ansible dot that debug options. Uh, let me. Okay. No. Okay. Now the doc. So doc part is very easy now because the doc earlier you can use the ansible doc command same, but you can use doc. And you can put like, for example, DNF. So we can see the DNF doc details, same like the Ansible doc, everything inside the dashboard. Now, if you want to see the images, for example, I want to see the images, then I can see the available images in my machine. So you can see some are not execution environment because those are like normal, some other container images running on my, not running, stored on my machine um, okay so these are the things you can explore this and uh, another one is the settings okay so settings is the settings we are using right now so you can see the ansible container engine uh editor command all those things whether i have configured or not execution or you can see okay i'm using through all the stuff you can see so when you have some issue easy to Verify whether you are using the right configuration or not. Okay. Then, okay, this is a very TUI mode. What if I want to use the very CLI? So, very easy. 
So you can use the Ansible. Let me try if I have a playbook here. Okay, so I have a playbook. Uh, okay. Okay, it's fine. Okay, so I want to execute. I got so Ansible navigator run, then we say site or YAML. Ansible. So you can see actually it's running inside my execution environment. And the output is you can see it's like our Ansible automation platform. So you can see the task, number of hosts number of tasks that skipped or ignored, failed, complete. But if I want to see the details, you can see the menu here. So I press zero. So I can see, okay, the task one, task two, task three. If I want to see the output of the task assembled three, I press three. So I can see what happened. Okay. But let's say if I want to go with the old one, so what I can do is can tell them, okay, I need the normal standard output. So it will use the standard method, the old Ansible playbook method. So you have the options. So it's easy. Okay. So this one. Now we check the uh, artifacts. Okay. Now we can see there is a artifacts already configured here. Yes, I mentioned true. Then I told okay, I can keep it like uh, maybe in your home directory or some other path. Here I put the project folder, but. I put git ignore to avoid uh, storing in my git repository. So inside the artifacts, I can see every time I run, can run it one more time. Uh, it will actually create the artifacts. Okay, that means every place like a job history in the AAP. So you can see all the details every time. If I want to do the replay, let's say I already executed. I want to see the replay of. One of the previous, for example, um, try Ansible navigator replay, then artifact slash this one. Twenty sixty. One better I copy this. Okay. I think this is the first one. So I can see the content like the job history in the AAP or Ansible Tower. Okay. So this is the tool we highly recommend to use instead of Ansible playbook. The good thing is whatever you are executing, whatever you are testing, the playbook, if it's working here. It will work in AAP for sure because you are using the same execution environment or container image in the local developing environment or and also the AAP or Ansible Tower. Not Tower, sorry, AAP. Okay. So this this is the thing. Actually, the navigator part we don't have. You can explore that. Uh, the is a good documentation portal with all the settings, how you can configure it, how you can execute this, and you can see that. Mm, sample also, I think that's it. Uh, I can keep the question or we, we can ask at the end, right? Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, any question we can discuss later. We will switch to the slides for the... Okay, so... This is another interesting topic, actually. We have this um, content signing. Anyone heard about the content signing or digital signing? The usage? I, it. I was yeah. a user, actually. Okay, good. Okay. So this is general. So we have content signing for many things, but this is about Ansible content signing. So we just uh, discuss, not discuss, I will just explain. You all know what is Ansible, now what, why we have Ansible collection. So earlier we have a Ansible called everything inside. We call it a battery included. So you install Ansible, everything you are getting together, the collection, the modules. There was no collection, the modules and all. Then we have Ansible 2.0, sorry, 2.10. We separated the base and we have collection. So we have Ansible collection, 
community collection, also the vendor collection, like Cisco collection, cyber collection, and all. At some point, we have a new name, which is called Ansible Core instead of Ansible Base. And then we have a Ansible collection and Ansible collection for the vendors or third parties. Now, um, why we are using collection? Because collection is the easiest way to develop and distribute the content. So let's say if it's all coming together, what will happen? Let's say in Cisco, you have a new version of the module. The Cisco team or the developer has to wait until there is a new version of Ansible. Now not required because you have collection separately. You can install your own collection separately, whatever the versions you need it. Okay. So this collection, actually, we have different sources. Like it can be the official collection. It can be a community one. It can be from your vendor. It can be an internal collection developed by your organization or your team. Now, this is the official or kind of a certified source of collections. We call it a Red Hat Ansible certified collection. And it's available in the Ansible Automation Hub, or Red Hat Ansible Automation Hub. So this is a place we can say, OK, these are trusted collection certified by Red Hat. But it's coming from the vendor, like Microsoft, Cisco, NetApp. You can see the AWS, Google, and all for managing their infrastructure or applications or the system using Ansible. Now we have another source, which is called Ansible Galaxy. It's a community collection where we can keep all the collections. I can contribute, you can contribute. But no trust because nobody knows what is inside. Whether it's like, yeah, basic linting and the scanning will happen, but we are not sure whether it's a trusted or someone tampered it. Now, why we need to, why we need a, the, the, the digital signing or content signing for Ansible kind of, because we know it's all open source. Anybody can contribute. So if someone contribute, I thought like it's all community based. Um, even inside your internal one, right? So we don't know whether, okay, the team A already developed one collection and distributing for automating something like, for example, VMware, vCenter or something like that. There is no way to verify whether the collection is as it is or someone modified mist by, by mistake or purposefully. So we have some challenges and we have to find a way how to stop, okay? Now, the collection, why we need the content signing, what's one is the authenticity. We have to ensure whether the collection or the content is coming from the original source or trusted source. Second one is integrity. We want to ensure, okay, this is not modified and this is not something like inside something or malicious or something like that. Then we also need to make sure, okay, this collection is secure to use inside your environment. Okay, I got it from Cisco. We are using without asking because we know, okay, this is coming from a vendor. Something happened, we have a person to ask or we have a vendor to ask, okay, why this happened? I secured this and it's happened like that. It's free and all different thing. We have a name to ask. Then the third one is a compliance and regulatory. Maybe we have some internal standard, okay, I need to ensure, okay, this collection is stored in this format kind of, kind of setup. Now, for Ansible signing and we have this option, and this is introduced in the Ansible Automation Platform 2.2, which no not. So this is like a very new security feature, and this will help us to secure our content distribution. To ensure, okay, this content is the original content and no one tampered. I'm digitally signed. So I developed the content or someone developed the content and they distribute, we can make sure, okay, nothing changed in the transit or nothing changed when it's stored, nothing changed when we download it. That's the purpose. Okay. Uh, make, sure, make sure you have Ansible core version 2.30 or later to support the Ansible content collection, sorry, Ansible content signing or verification. So how to implement the content signing? So content signing can be implemented in different methods. First one, actually, um, okay, we'll talk about the private automation hub. So private automation hub is the is a way of storing your content collection in your on premise. So for example, it's similar to satellite or Ansible. So usually you 
download a collection or use it from the Ansible Automation Hub. Instead, you can keep everything in a private automation hub. This is a solution. Uh, you pull the content from different sources like the Automation Hub, which uh, we discussed earlier, then the Galaxy, the community collection, also from the third party. <coughs> And this, it can be GitHub uh, or private GitHub repository or from a vendor, like something like a proprietary collections, don't know. Then um, we have to enable the content signing in the private automation hub. Assume this is our store of uh, collections. So first one, we have to keep the, we have to create a GDP key pair, not like the SS SSL kind of concept, but it's a GPG. Then we have to create the signing script. So every time when we upload, make sure this content is signed and it will create some checksum and make sure it's signed, kind of digital signing. Then we have to enable the signing in the private automation hub. So what will happen? During the deployment, uh, we will add the public key. So we, we have like a similar to the SSL or the SSH, we have the public and the private key. So the, the private key, of course, we cannot share with anyone. So it will be stored with the private automation app when you every time when you upload new collection, either from the internet or from any sources, we trust, okay, this is coming from a trusted source. Then the private, the public one, the GPG key can be distributed because it's like a verified to ensure, okay, this is a signed one. Then you add this to a GPG key to the key string, like the SSH key string. Then you include the signing command in when in your Ansible Galaxy. Also, you can do the same for your um, execution environment because we are not using the Ansible Galaxy every time. Now with the container image, everything is inside. So when you build the container image execution environment, you can include this so that when execution environment will happen, it's pulling the content from the private automation hub or from the internet. It can do the validation. Now, uh, if you are the if you are configuring the private automation hub, you have to configure all these features uh, like the, enable the content signing for the collections. Then you can uh, enable the approval, content signing and approve. Then also you can enable the other services inside your inventory configuration. This is during the deployment of private automation hub. It's a one-time task. Then you have to do, let's say you have an AAP already running. Enable this, make sure it's a AAP 2.2 or later. Enable this, rerun the setup, that's it. It will enable it automatically. Then the UI, you can see some changes. Okay, so this is for the execute environment because we are not going to use Ansible Galaxy install collection every time. It will be inside the container inside the container image. So whenever you build a new container image, custom container image, or maybe you have some specification, you can include this string. This is a key string where you have the GPG key. And what will happen whenever there is a collection? Something someone tampered, it will throw error. It won't include. It will say, okay, something changed, something modified with our knowledge or without knowledge. Again, there is a dependency on the Ansible core version. Now, uh, this is another topic uh, not related. Uh, this is called project signing. So we have content signing, then the collection. What? This is related to the one, but we are not going to talk a lot. You can do it by your own. We will share the lab. This is a project signing. So project signing, similar. Okay, now you have Ansible playbook, Ansible configuration stored in the GitHub repository or somewhere your Git repository or source control management. You want to ensure, okay, this playbook already tested and no one changed until I execute. So this, is a, this was a, like a requirement earlier. So what will happen? You have tested this, someone log into the GitHub or your repository and change something 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 like uh, something malicious or something uh, which is going to cause some issues. What will happen? We assume, okay, this is a tested one. We can run it, run it, run it. But if you include the project signing, what will happen? Every time 
we have a content signing validation here. So when you sync the project, it will verify, okay, something changed or not. And if something wrong, it will alert. Okay. So this is a project signing. Um, so project signing, how it works? You can see, you can share the slides later. No need to worry about it. So we have this developer, then we have the repository. So it will do the signing here and commit back and make sure, okay, this content is signed, digitally signed, no changes. Something someone changed, it will be changed. It will make sure, okay, only you can change it, right? Someone change means in the middle, if someone changed, that's wrong. So it will do the signature verification, take some validations and make sure this is a validation. In case a validation fails, you can see, okay, there's a validation fail, cannot launch the job template at all, very safe. Okay. Now uh, we can try the content signing. Actually, this is a public lab. You can utilize it. I will, we will get, share the link later. Okay. So the content signing, uh, I, I'm not sure how frequent you will be using, but it's a great feature if you want to secure your collection. I don't know if you are if you have an internal collection developed by your internal team and organization, then you can enable this. No harm. It's very useful one. Okay. So this lab, I'm not going to do a lot. Okay. So so this lab, you can see we have a uh, this is our hub, and we have a GUI. Okay, so inside the hub, so this is our automation hub, or we call private automation hub. This on-premise version of the automation hub. Then you can see the content collection here. So no collections. You can see some namespaces here: Ansible, Community, like Cisco, Google, and um, this is approval. Now what we will do? We will upload a collection and see what will happen if someone change the content. Okay. Um, inside the automation app, they have already configured the GPG key, all the stuff, nothing to do, but the steps are already available in the blog and also the documentation. We have a reference slide where you can check all the blogs, articles where they explain how you can implement it. Okay. Now the first thing, okay, I'm the developer. Uh, we have some collection uh, ready to publish. So this is the Ansible Galaxy method of publishing the collection using the API. You can also do the browse method from the hub, but this is a automated or faster method. Um, um, <clears throat> okay, so we have two collections uploaded. One is you can see one is an Ansible underscore. So Ansible hyphen test. This is Ansible, this is a collect namespace. This is the collection name. Here this is community.lab. So there are two namespace, two collections. And this C is used to ignore the SSL validation. Now, the collection is not published yet because we just uploaded. Anyone can upload if they have a token. So what you have to do is you have a option to sign and approve. So this stage, what will happen? You can test the collection to ensure it's safe to use. So you can include the your CI, CD automation, whatever the testing inside the pipeline. Maybe you can pull these. So you can see, I can download it from here or somewhere and you can see the status needs review. If all good, okay, assume, okay, I already tested, no harm. So this is from trusted developer, team A or team B, sign and approve. 
this is also tested and sign and approve. And I go to the collection. You can see there are two collections, but you can see the difference. This is a signed, not just collection, it's a signed collection. So I have the details of the digital sign. Now, the next one, okay, this is good. What we will do is we have the collection now. Now we have to deploy the collection. So as an end user, as a like you are using it for the, your playbook. So first thing is to download or install the collection using Ansible Galaxy command. So in Ansible Galaxy, you can directly install it, uh, but we need to add the GPG key here. So they already provided the GPG key here, which is called Galaxy Signing Service dot AIC. So the first thing you can give it like in the default ring, or you can put a different key ring name here. So we are using the same name. It's like uh, it will be stored in the home directory keyring.kbx file, just to add one time. And you can see some names or there we have passphrase and all. Now, what you have to do is install the collection. So when you install the collection, first of all, you will try without any validation. I'm just installing the collection. So what will happen? You can see here, actually it's just installing, but there is a warning. It says, let me try to zoom in. It cannot it says, the GPG key ring for the collection signature is not configured, but signatures were provided by the Galaxy server. Server says, I have a signature. If you want, you can validate or ignore. So in the next one, what you'll do, you'll do the same step, but this time, we will include the validation. So you can see here, I'm installing the same collection, then I am passing the key ring with my key ring file. I enable the debug mode to see what is happening in the backend. And you can see the GPG validation happening here. Okay. And it says success. Sorry, verification succeeded for the collection. Looks good. No temporary. Now, how we are going to uh, detect it, right? So if you check here, there is a there is a key detail, some something called uh, kind of a metadata inside the collections added by the Validation. Now we can also try to tamper the data. So I'm going to modify something installed already. <laughs> now, what if someone got access, some like attacker, someone got access to your repos already installed, like container or something, then I can modify, right? Okay. So in the next one, what we will do, we can modify this content and test it. We will do the same thing. We are not going to do a lot. We just create a readme file or something, some file inside our collection, which is already installed using the Ansible Galaxy. Okay, I just test one file here. Then it's already installed. We cannot use the Ansible Galaxy install again. Instead, we can use the Ansible Galaxy verify command here. Just verify this collection. But again, I'm passing the key ring here. This is my signature. And you'll say, okay, there is a manifest hash actually there is a modified content in your collection. That means don't use it. It can be new file, it can be modified file, but it's not matching with the signature. Okay. Um, this lab is free, you can access it. If you enable this, uh, more, you can see more details, like the expected one, Actually, expected is the file does not exist or more, does not modify, but you can see this, this uh, something changed. Okay, so this is the collection part. If you want to, okay. 
practice this. The lab is available here. Let me share that here. Um, so this is your homework. So you can go to this lab, standard form, or you just Google Ansible Free Lab. You'll get the link on the top. Okay. And there are several labs available. To Canola and Search Sign, you can see the Ansible content collection with the prior automation. The same lab we have tried just now. And also the project signing, which we just showed in the slides, how you can ensure. And the, the good thing is, you just need a browser. You don't need anything to install on your machine. So it's just a web based lab. Just also. Um, that's it. Uh, I think we can open for the questions. Yep. Just to start, uh, the Ansible Navigator, it's, I think, a free, right? it's part yes. of this one. So Ansible, uh, the AAP, is it like a paid version? Is there any uh, open source version? Uh, the open source version is there, right? It's part of the uh, Ansible repository. There are a few uh, different, um, I would say, repository. So, so, you got the so basically, AAP is like yeah. a platform. And so the platform itself has more than 20 over open source projects, projects that make up the platform. Okay. So the ones that you see today, Ansible Navigator is part of one of the 20 plus uh, okay. open source projects. So, it's, because, yeah, so essentially the as well, the AP itself, right? When we talk about the paid version, right? When you get the packages from us, right? For the for repository itself, it really encompasses all the different tools like Ansible Navigator you see there. Uh, it also works well with uh, Ansible Builder, which helps to build the uh, execution images, environment the images. Uh, Ansible Runner is to run the uh, execution Excellent. environment itself, right? And then you have uh, the, the, the Ansible automation Controller, the Automation Hub. Those so, are all part of yeah. the platform. So there's a few different components inside. But definitely, it is open source, right? Like I'll be able to see. use my uh, custom image. Um, in my CLI environment without connecting to any repository. Okay. If my, yes. all my collections are local. You can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so at the end of the day, all these things are a container image, right? So if you store at any uh, container image repository, yeah. then it should be yeah. 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 Essentially, the automation hub itself, what we are providing is, let's say, for users okay. that doesn't have a image repository in their current environment today, it okay. can utilize the automation hub to be that image repository and store the images there. Yeah. Kue is also made in that, right? Kue dot yes. Yeah. So it's very simple. So your AAP, the one, right? The platform, the product. Yes. Are based on 20 plus open source projects. Okay. So the, all the projects can, anyone yes. can download and install yeah. file on. Okay. Like the Ansible Navigator, you can install using the so Python or from it, the original source. Let's say you want the very latest one, you can use from the source. It's all open. All are integrated and one place marketplace one, kind of place. yeah one product that's a AAP. It's more around if you have all these different uh projects, you need to integrate them yourself okay, right, if right. you want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go to upstream, it's always fastest moving and all these things. It may not be stable, right? So what we have is a stable product that is enterprise grade and valid. Yeah. Now, of course, we help orchestrating things fast, yeah, and with support. <laughs> and of course, uh, there's something that uh, we didn't really talk about is the ability to do cluster. So if you go with the open source, uh, usually it's more around development work. So it's yes. usually a single instance that you're running. If you want to go on a larger scale, right, it's going to be harder. Uh, the other stuff that we have, like a receptor for the automation mesh, so yeah. those are also things that it's needed to do that uh, multi data center management. I think it's good. Yeah. Okay, this like one of the. Yeah. Like you can, it's very, very like easy to scale. So really if you want to add a new node in like another location or country, you have to rerun and all this one is more easy compared to that. It's called automation mesh. 
I think if you look at the blog, it's actually running um, even for OpenShift, right? So you can actually run this as an operator inside yeah, OpenShift. Open. We have 4.11 now. 4.11 or 12, something else. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all. Anybody have any other questions? The content signing whenever we run a playbook during the time it will validate, or, or we manually have to do the validation before running the playbooks? You mean the Ansible content collection? Yes. Yes. So you have multiple options. One is during the installation. So let's say if you are still using the local execution, not the container one, you are installing the collection on your local machine. So it will go to your project directory or wherever you configured, or like your home directory dot ansible slash collections. Whenever you install, you can make sure, okay, this is uh, safe and trusted and signed. That's the first one during the installation. Second one, you, you can, if you are running it like Ansible playbook, like a Jenkins or some kind of a integration, every time you are going to install and deploy, that time you can again, it's validate. Then the third one, like for example, you are executing inside the container image. So during the container build, you entered okay, you are installing the correct collection with the signed one using the key ring we mentioned earlier. Also possible. So every anytime you can it's up to you. It will take some time, kind of step no, it won't take that much time. So it will just automatic inside the stuff actually, inside the pipeline or workflow, whatever you want. Okay, so that's all. It's out of the context, maybe for this. The GPG key, since the private key or something is stored inside the private automation hub, right? In case I need to rotate, is the public key is almost distributed across all the packages and everything, correct? It's stored as mm -hmm. metadata. No, public key is actually we are not distributing together with the collection. Actually, you. Okay, because uh, we see in the metadata, there is a signature mm -hmm. to it, correct? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a hash of something. Plus yeah, the because key that means, hash right? is kind of a combination. You have the key, right. you have the public key. Public key, and you can distribute key. anywhere, right? Oh, that's right. Uh, so that one, let's say, okay, I, I develop it, and I have the private key, and I already use that to sign it. Right. So I distribute the key to you, right. not the pub, private, private public. Key. Public key, right. Not with the collection, separately. Right. Now the question is, let's assume that now I distribute it a couple of people. So if I need to rotate the private key. You have to do the same. It's like SSL. So it's okay. like, but the, we, the older public key, will it work? Still, uh, no, no, no. So it means we have to re sign yes, the yeah. contents already. It's like similar to the SSH. Yes, if you rotate, we should. So I thought the same logic, but it just. He has to match. If no, it doesn't matter. Doesn't it's a key pair. Yeah. It's a pair. Okay, of course. But the only thing is, like, you can put it like a separate, put it anywhere. No, it's a safe space. We have the same issue with the SSL side as some other places. Typically, at least in the score signing, if you, unless you, find, you feel that the private key is compromised, you don't yeah. kind of change it. And Nowadays, the regulators are very like, adamant, right? So they want you to uh, go for like every two to three months, you have to rotate them. Okay. Okay. That only I have to do, I have to do some yeah, kind of automated work for something. We technically not required, but yeah, <laughs> it, it's like very simple. Like, okay, if you're talking about a person, yeah, you have to distribute it in some, in some, some way, uh, but if it's a system, like you are using some pipelines for doing this um, container build, then it's just like a kind of a token. So whenever yeah. you up, uh, update the private, okay, it's part, should be part of the process. Process, yes. You know, okay, you have this key. Public key mm -hmm. stored in 10 places. Yeah. So whenever you rotate it, it should be automatic. I mean, in, in, uh, like a Jenkins pipeline or your open system pipeline to build the content, put it there. There is no expiry for the key IPD, yeah. like SSH key, right? Yeah, yeah. no expiry. You know, nowadays, most of the document signing in Singapore, also in Australia, I think it's mostly digital, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same, same. Same logic. That's correct. So, yeah. It's clear or 
not understand. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to try a few things like it's new. Yeah, try this lab uh, so you will understand how it's working. It's public and right. there are many other labs, but really the navigator was really nice because it was K9 for Kubernetes with almost, I think, Vim editor. Mm. People who got used to Vim editor will love it. I'll try it. So the good thing about this, uh, you can just, if you want to experience the na the navigator, the AP, anything, it's already there. You don't need to install because most of the time, it's setting up, it will take time. We have a lot of all these labs. It is a bit similar to learn.openshift, where yeah. you can learn how to use Ansible exactly. and the platform. Yeah. Okay, I think it's another question. So, so eventually, the Ansible playbook will be discontinued, right? Uh, uh, as of now, it's still there. Yeah, still there. Right. Yeah, referring to the CLI, the, is, uh, the CI. Navigator, is it? Sorry? The future focus is Navigator, is it? Yes. Yeah, it's it's highly recommended because of the because earlier it was everything Ansible playbook. Yes. Yes. Still inside, actually, it's Ansible runner in the tower. Still, still, it's a runner in that container image. Yeah. But if you want to get the same result, because if you are running on the laptop, for example, and have different Python package installed, either I have to create the Python virtual environment to match with the container image. Again, it's a mess. So if you have a container image already, which is which you are using in the production environment, you can use the same for the development. To ensure, okay, you're getting the same result. So only Ansible Navigator can do that without an Ansible automation platform on your desktop. And, and then also the enhancement for Navigator is because we see more and more users expanding the overall Notes that they are managing, right? Yeah. Top of hundred thousand yeah. dollars, ten thousand. Right? There are some, maybe, not sure in Singapore, but especially other countries yeah. that reach a large it, number, a very large number. So, how do you go into those individual notes when after they executed, right? And you want to see the output, right? Okay. Then it's much more easier to Re visualize. Re Last time when you use Ansible playbook, you just everything comes out, right? Like just yeah. one whole YAML. Then what do you do? You pipe it somewhere, right? Oh, yeah. So then, yeah, so now you, you can see line by line individually each notes. Actually, it's like shipping events to Elasticsearch and Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone do that. Actually, it's very, very difficult, actually. But they provide their own solutions after that. In the in the production, it's okay. You can start somewhere. But when you develop, you're running it every minute, you right? And you have uh, like a big chunk of log. And if you want to replay, if you want to see the previous log, okay, I changed something. Previously, it was like this. Now, it, yeah. you can see that different segment. If you're used to the old output, you can actually use as well navigator output to yeah, that, that format as well. Yeah. yeah, also you can see the output if you want to yeah. go back to that. No, <laughs> but if yeah. you're using AWX, can we yeah. still execute the playbook in the navigator kind of a format? Yeah. Or? There is yes. no dependency actually. And the place also using the container image, right? No, no, AWX the is navigator the is only like a CLI mode or? Um, this CLI plus TUI. Navigator CLI, CLI, uh, CLI, CLI mode. Right? Yeah. Okay. CLI and TUI. Okay. TUI, TUI means a text user. It's like a menu yeah. based one. So you can escape. And no, uh, that, that we got it. But let's say if I have the navigator commands, whatever you actually mm -hmm. get from traditional to the bottom. Yeah. So how can I execute those commands if I have AWX or let's say even the tower for an example? Because in Tower, we anyway create the project, right? Yeah. So it typically, by default, uses Ansible playbook execution format only, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there, how exactly the navigator is going to function? No, the navigator is mainly for development. Development. Actually. So you do the development using okay. navigator, and yeah. then after that, you use AWX or controller okay. to go and run. Yes. Okay. So mostly like a developer. In the production, we are not going to run the Ansible playbook. It's Ansible runner. Correct. AWS yes. and AAP controller. All use rather. Right? Still, still the same. Same. This is what more, more, more like for the development, the and, development testing. and testing. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's yeah. much easier to see, and you can use containers. If you use Ansible playbook, it doesn't run in containers. Right. Right. So that's a major difference. Yeah. Only the developer side is what the navigator is like. Most exactly. Or unless, okay, let's say you have a, a situation. Because the artifacts that we were storing, mm. and as I mentioned, if I have like 10,000 odd virtual machines, mm. if I need to put, let's say, a 600 machine failed, mm. that would have been easy if the similar, the job structure, the status, everything was displayed. How is the navigator was also available in the AWS? Yeah, not the exact one. You can see, one. yeah, not exact one, but you can see similar one, the one we show, right? The task, the subtask, 
the number of false fail yes, or yes, success yes. kind of yeah. yeah that's the maybe in the future in the future yeah. anyone, ah, can, what I'm anyone can contribute <laughs> it's okay. yeah, yeah, actually, yeah i think it links to, i think i've seen a demo i think the link uh if i hit the task it opens in vs code or my editor or whatever you told right the exact you can, line yeah, you can. of the task it's easy to edit actually yes. yeah. so that's why the editing like that's happening it doesn't it add a burden because locally if i'm developing i can use navigator easy to check the bug uh, understand what's happening and store the artifacts. Okay. But if I need to put that particular content back to, let's say, AWX by creating a project or tower, mm -hmm. I have to again go back to the traditional way of no. pipeline development, right? No, container, okay, AWX or controller. No, the YAML that you were showing, right? The uh -huh. navigator YAML. Uh -huh. That is almost not compatible to the typical playbook that I write, right? Mm -hmm. It's compatible. The okay. Navigator runs the playbook on it. So play yeah, it won't, it won't consider the navigator YAML or some nothing. Okay, okay. It's just a wrapper on the Ansible navigator is just later. on that when, whenever you use Ansible Navigator command, it will take care of it will just consider the Ansible Navigator or YAML. Okay, got it, got it. it yeah, when yeah. you push it together with a controller or AWS, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's, still so it's good actually. For example, I'll give you an example. So in the pipeline, for example, you are using Ansible in the pipeline. Yes. You are not calling the AP, yeah. like Jenkins or Tecton or some some pipelines, and you want to execute the Ansible playbook. So you have a command. One of the steps is like Ansible playbook, and you call this. Then there are hundreds of dependency. So what will happen? You have to install all these Python packages inside your Jenkins server or Jenkins yeah. runner or whatever GitHub yeah. runner or whatever. Yeah, if it's... <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 it's very normal. normal. So you have to install all the Python packages because you develop everything. Then you put in the GitHub runner or Jenkins runner. Then you have now you have very easy. You can use Ansible Navigator there. Yes. Call the image. Image. Execute. Yeah. No, zero issues. So it's very good. Maybe just to point out, right? Because we are focusing more on the developer experience this yeah, days. Yeah. Uh, we have things like Ansible Lint just to test the correctness yeah, yeah, yeah. of the uh, playbook itself. So that's why you see all this focus towards uh, those directions. So, and VS Code, I think you showed the other time. On yeah, how you yeah. Can so VS Code actually, you can- Development work, <laughs> checking of syntax and all these things. So this one, actually you can see, uh, yeah, if, if it's uh, your different ID, doesn't matter, VS Code, actually it's uh, already, we have an official, Red Hat official, plugin for the Ansible. So it will support all the linting even before the Ansible navigator thing. Actually, you can decide the execution environment here. So when you run the actual stuff, the linting actually happen, happening inside the container. So you can decide whether you want to use which Python, uh, if you have a Python which virtual environment, all, all those things. And also you can see the, uh, like the issues like whether it's an output whether any issue in the playbook or some other stuff like um, wrong syntax or suggestions best practices all lending will happen here okay. in the vs code so when you develop it will help you to speed up the thing yeah. because otherwise you test it put it there okay there's an error so you have to come back and yeah okay that's good um No other questions. And we have the reference slide. I think we can add some more here. So we have the links on of the blogs and all. We will share the slides later. Yep. So you can check the article if you want to do some hands-on. Then the Ansible signing. The project is there. It's open source project again under the Ansible organization. Then you can see other official Red Hat documentation for the signing and also the blog where it clearly explained how to implement it. It's very straightforward. And uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. So this this actually is uh, happening. I think it happened in the finish. I think your uh, last two days itself, few days. Uh, I think there is a virtual content in terms of recordings available. Online, if you want to um, go and assess it, you can you know, uh, go and uh, sign up in the link and then you can assess some of those content itself. Now, uh, why I put it here is because uh, Rare Summit and Smokefest is together this year. 
right? So in terms of Ansible Fest, if you guys are aware, Ansible Fest is our flagship event for Ansible community as well as our offering itself, where they announce a lot of um, different things, right? Uh, Red Summit in general is just more from a Red Hat um, point of view, right? What are the different things we announce, like our uh, Kubernetes, uh, OpenShift, we also have some announcements there, uh, and then Ansible as well. Right, but in terms of Ansible, right, there are two things. Right? I think just now Ganesh clicked on one of the tabs <laughs> accidentally. Yeah. So he, he has, he's actually using a beta for Lightspeed, right? Beta, right? It's not even tech preview, but um, so Lightspeed is previously, I think we call it IBM Project, Project Wisdom, Wisdom, right? So now they call it Lightspeed. Interesting name, right? Uh, and of course, we have Event Driven Ansible. I think we talked about this twice for our meetup, right? Even, yeah. even event driven and civil, right? So I think some updates that I just want to say is that for Lightspeed itself, um, I think it hopefully, you know, the tech preview comes out, right? Uh, and then you guys get a hands-on uh, uh, experience, right? For using Ansible Lightspeed. If you're not aware what is Ansible Lightspeed, essentially it is like a um, chat GPT ish you know, yeah, like generative AI playbooks. of how you can write playbooks, right? So for what, that, yeah, so you just, declare the name between name dot then the colon right then you just declare it cut what the class you want and it will prompt out generate out a table for you right in a way that is decorative right so why we do this is not saying that you know whatever out there today is not enough right i'm sure that we all try to use uh any kind of uh, generative ai for writing playbooks today we definitely we all have tried it but it's just more for for example as how do you know whether that playbook works, right? How do you know that that playbook is using content that is certified, for example, right? Because all the generative playbooks that is out today is all from Google, internet, or from Bing, or wherever it is, right? The source, you do not know. Sometimes they don't even, um, like, do a watermark or, like, a link of where the source comes from when they generate that playbook. But for us itself, um, I think there were some demos. You can go to the YouTube page where they actually did a small demo for this. It actually shows what source it comes from. And the source itself, you can see is from, let's say, our certified content collection, or you can see it's from Ansible Galaxy. Right. So at least the playbook that it generates out it is from a certified content, for example. Right. It's not from any other source that from the internet somewhere pulled from Stack Overflow or something like that. Right. Right. So at least. From in terms from the enterprise user as a user, I know where it comes from. I think one of those things, yeah. right, will be the difference in terms of using fully qualified collection name, uh, yes. which we will be more around doing those things as compared to the old way of writing, which you may be finding it if you use something like a chat GPT. Yeah. yeah. So that so that's for as well. Like speed. Hopefully, uh, next few months we have some updates for you guys, or so we can show something. Right. Uh, we will definitely try to show something for that. Event driven Ansible, I think one update is just more for um, hopefully there is a tech preview that comes out soon. Right? I think the next Ansible release will be another month or two, it will come out. And once it comes out, hopefully there's a tech preview and there is a uh, UI built for it. Right, So at least from a user, it's much more easier to use the event driven Ansible. I think previously we have to download certain packages and it runs. It's mainly on CI. Yeah. Uh, before this, but it's going to go onto UI uh, integrated mm -hmm. with the uh, controller. Yeah, it will start sources with uh, currently try to search the, the, the number ah, of sources yes. who's going to contribute for the event. Yeah. So I think it's said to uh, expand, is it? Yeah, it, it, it will expand. Yes. So I think the the demonstration that they showed on Summit or Ansible Fest is using with Dynatrace as one of the sources. Yes, I think another source they use is uh, I think it's like a chat chat or oh, sorry it's like slack like or something like that okay, right so if there is let's say a, a a particular chat board or there is a slack that says that you know um to please raise a ticket from there then it triggers they, 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 they see the event then it triggers to you know something to create a ticket for you for example right so that kind of integration that you can do i think kafka is definitely something yeah. that we yeah, are also you know definitely uh, going to integrate with uh, i think uh jean showed it Previously, yeah. right, uh, for Kafka. So in that, that in terms of overall updates uh, for Ansible, right. Uh, another thing is, if you are not aware, I think two weeks time we are having this Ansible automates, right. Uh, it's more for, uh, I think if you really want to 
learn or just listen a bit more for what are the sum of our terms of our solutions on Ansible, how it's being used for Ansible today, right? And uh, you can sign up the link, right? So the QR code is there if you want to register. Right. So I'll just leave this here, right? I think that's all for slides that we have. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Or anything that you guys want to see the next time? Actually, one thing point, what is I faced it is like we developed something and nobody will do it after as a part of DevOps or some infra guy, right? So they won't give you any VM to test it. I write everything. Then when I hit first time, then I get some issues, right? So is it like any virtual environment or something we can write? Try run, of course, yes. So but the point is we even with a try run, like OB images, can it be like behave like how you guys test it? That's it. Yeah. Let me put it that way. Because whenever I run first time, correct? There'll be some or some other issue where I'll get it. But I'm not able to test in isolation where I'm always dependent on the application team to give me a server so that I pilot it like a run one time in a lower and lower. You guys have any like you guys like a container image, you keep it as target and push it. Yeah, I think this one depends on the what kind of playbook you're developing. Mostly not networks, like a normal VM related mm -hmm. set. It's yeah. we handle with a container based lab actually. Can you mimic it saying that okay? I'll, yeah, I'll can mimic it. it. What kind of operations like if you're handling the disk based some operations, then I think container will be yeah. an issue. But if it's just like installation configurations, you some disk, but usually but most of them are wrong. I think I should also try that's it. a lab setup. Actually. <laughs> Generally, for the OS based one, I don't. We don't really we face issue with the network based and firewall or the stairs. Network we didn't touch it, I think this you are not able to spin up extra virtual machines for testing. So usually with in a project end uh, setup, right? So all the costings and everything will go, they'll have like limited set of time. So they last saying that it's very simple, they just develop the scripts, but they expect in day one it should work like perfect. But whenever we go and hit, they usually have an issue. A first day, of course, once we tune it, tune it on the first day, it should be fine as well. Point is, usually the first day is well. Get it to show. Here is more work for you. Can you if you are not allowed to use the VMs. Enough, I mean, he may not have enough resource to run. Yeah, run VMs. Yeah. Usually, we... other than that, I think it's pretty much work for me. Usually, it's like. You're, you are supposed to have a turbo as a environment. <laughs> it's highly... I, ideally, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but most of the time, it doesn't happen. Okay, it's very risky because we don't know what. How about using the cloud? Oh. I mean, as in just build small instances in the cloud, like all the T2 micros and just for testing. Actually, a little bit separate because uh, some projects, of course, they are completely in cloud. They are not supporting much on cloud okay. right now. Some are actually on on premise. So some are bare metal, of course. So we have to go. But you just testing part of the yes. logic. No. Right. So you may not you may not have to have everything. usually we'll be involved to set up the entire, for example, oh, the whole IBM MQ cluster for the like for the data center. That's how okay. we go in. Uh, small, small installations, usually the project team will handle it by themselves. So, you know, so now we have to work for something for the data center level. So I came to brush up so it will be better. Yeah, thanks. It was nice. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? For yeah. the content signing, okay. I mean, I made some changes, but I don't legit, uh, but I don't want to, to, to resign. For one or two times, I wanted to run. Is there any way to override to validate the content signing? It will, okay. If you're talking about the AAP platform or uh, content signing, the collections. No, if, if the execution is happening locally, it's just warning only. It won't. Block you, yeah. Okay, it won't block you. So, the signing is only for doing for the installation. So, signing okay. So, if you install okay, the, 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 the server is providing the content with a sign says okay, and providing sign is up to you whether you want to verify or not. Okay, okay. If you verify it says okay, it's a good or not. <laughs> now, once you install, it's only your machine. But still, like I said, machine, if someone enter inside your machine or the server, they can modify it. So, you know, okay, I installed this six months ago or one month ago. What if someone modified? Maybe purposefully or maybe unknowingly, they want to test something, they modify the collection or something inside. 
there's a issue so that's the place we are telling okay do the step. so if you don't do the obviously verify command no issue okay it's just an option not like it's not going to block anything so it's actually what's going on is it builds a small virtual container. Okay. So it builds up a container that allows you to it seem like the yes. S containers for JS. And, and that, that's a kind of concept. Any hey, other questions? In fact, when you do a small content, you will want to do controls in the friction there. If not, I think I thank oh, everybody for your time. Thank right. you. Okay. Yeah. Especially we'll see you guys on the next one. Those are the sound Sorry. So the same kind of concept. You have to spend for this molecule. And several more you answer. I guess you're right. Some, 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 this uh in form in the depth page of uh like any interesting topic yep uh things coming but no which one is good for the I think like a connectivity issue or the module issue? Most of the examples are Okay, yeah, the thing is the newer version of Windows <laughs> comes by default. By default. We are in the dragon. is end of life. So twenty nineteen onwards is actually quite old. Yeah. 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 The new projects are pretty much. Where they pull us into legacy projects. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. See you all. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So you have to check with the which which uh, integration they are looking.